One. In New York, at the UN headquarters, Sunrise brought news of President Putin's words and his threats. He had spoken while leaders and delegates here at the annual General Assembly were asleep. And from the early arrivals... Prime Minister, what do you make of uh, Vladimir Putin's comments this morning? Canada. The European Union. Is it time for NATO to double down, for the EU to double down? He's talking about nuclear war now, sir. Turkey. What should NATO do now? This wasn't the moment for off-the-cuff remarks. Statements came. Western nations in universal condemnation of Russia. No real change there. It was the day, though, for the American president to deliver his key speech. Well, here he is arriving just now a little later than planned and with a speech that has been altered as a consequence of what Mr. Putin has been saying. And from the podium, he was blunt and he was firm. This war is about extinguishing Ukraine's right to exist as a state, plain and simple, and Ukraine's right to exist as a people. Whoever you are, wherever you live, whatever you believe, that should not, that should make your blood run cold. Because if nations can pursue their imperial ambitions without consequences, then we put at risk everything this very institution stands for, everything. On the specifics of the Russian nuclear threat, he had this. We do not seek conflict. We do not seek a Cold War. A nuclear war can not be won and must never be fought. Then from the chamber to the first meeting with Prime Minister Truss, Ukraine the focus of course, but an interesting hint of other challenges ahead. And finally, uh, we both are committed to protecting the gains of the Good Friday Agreement in Northern Ireland. And I'm looking forward to hearing what's on your mind and how we can continue to cooperate. America's laser eye on Northern Ireland. Well, hi there. Welcome to the Little Eden Podcast. This is DJ Ann. And we'd like to thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, it looks like we're going to be talking about nuclear war. Ooh. Um, you know, that's obviously going to be the focus for a lot of major news, news outlets over the next 24 hours is going to be about Putin's statement on nuclear war. You're going to see that everywhere, all over the place. So we're going to address that a little bit. But for me... The main article is going to be coming up next. But before we pass on too quickly, anything you want to let them know or anything you want to comment so far, Sam? I mean, they've been teasing nuclear war um, for a while now. Yes. And I I honestly, I don't, I can't predict what leaders are going to do in the future, but it seems to me more and more every day that it's more of, of um it's a warfare that's not really a, as physical as the nuclear war. Yeah. And to me, I, I it seems to make more sense that things have been more biological. Yeah. And um, fear mongering makes no sense to drop radiation on an area that you can't use the resources. Yeah. Anymore. What's the point, there's, right? There's what's no the point of even expending resources? If you're going to destroy the reason why you're doing it. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. And then, um, I just, you know, these threats are, are threats as far as I'm concerned, but I think that the real danger is, is what we're seeing going on around us with the food supply, uh, factories the that are being burned, the gas companies or, or pipelines. Or the manipulation of the currencies, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, when we're going to, we're going to hop into this after we, we discuss it a little bit, but AP reporters, they're breaking down the Fed's latest break hike. So the Fed is now going to uh, raise the interest rate. And so that affects everybody. That affects your interest rate, your housing, your housing loan interest rate, your car loan interest rate, even small, small, you know, payday loans. Everything's affected. Interest rates are going to go up across the board. And this isn't the first hike in, in but so many months. So there's been others. Right. And um, with the way that they're indoctrinating children now, they're going to, like children are easily led into wanting to feel like they're doing something for the best. And I know when I was a child, I was really gung ho about recycling. Everything that school was teaching me, I was soaking in about environment. Yeah. And um, now you're going into we're going into an era where um, the education system is going to indoctrinate your children 
uh, to believe that it was their parents that were irresponsible with money that caused this to happen. Yes, when it's been their control and their manipulation yeah. and their agenda. They're the ones who've been spending. The leaders have been spending unnecessarily in a way that the financial burden is going to be placed on our future ch children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Yeah. And what's going to happen, it seems to me, is that the indoctrination is going to, going to push them into uh, thinking that they never had a chance and it was the fault of their parents. Yup, and to turn them against their parents. Let's see a little bit what they have to say about this rate hike. My name is Chris Rugaber and I cover the Federal Reserve and the economy for the Associated Press in Washington. Well, today the Fed raised its benchmark interest rate by another hefty amount, a three quarter percentage point increase. And Fed Chair Jerome Powell, I think, really sought in his press conference today to drive home how serious the Fed is about raising rates to fight inflation. And uh, even if it does cause some higher unemployment or some trouble for the economy, uh, the Fed has lifted its benchmark interest rate to the highest level since 2008, uh, between 3 percent and 3 and a quarter percent. And that should push up borrowing costs, or it will push up borrowing costs for things like mortgages, auto loans, business loans. And the Fed hopes that by raising the cost of borrowing, it will slow spending and therefore slow the economy a bit, and then that will bring down inflation. One of the other things the Fed did is it also projected that it will continue to hike rates uh, even to higher levels than previously expected. So it now expects to push its uh, key benchmark interest rate up to 4% up to four and a half percent by the end of this year and another quarter point after that. That should push up the cost of mortgages and other borrowing even higher. Uh, we've already seen the housing market take a hit. Home sales have fallen 20 percent in the past year. The 30-year mortgage rate has topped six percent for the first time since 2008. So that is going to make it harder for folks to buy a home. Uh, and it also risks a recession. So there is a risk that more that a lot of people will lose their jobs, <laughs> frankly, that um, the Fed has increased its forecast for how high unemployment will go. They now expect unemployment to get up to 4.4 percent next year. And that's compared to 3.7 percent now. And guys, we know it's not the easiest thing to sit and listen about financial news, but is this is very important. This is this is the nitty gritty. This is how how the price of goods are affected and and it's not surprising that they're raising interest rates meanwhile average citizens are buying goods their groceries on credit they're they're going to be affecting the people that are living off the debt just to survive not people playing with debt to make money yeah you in the past year you've seen ridiculous articles at least i have about encouraging more spending through credit cards and more debt and they said that that was supposed to help the recession. Yeah. Uh, that you should spend more. The economy needs more input with the spending. Yeah. And you just heard what this guy said. It's the total opposite of that. And, and he is the he is a reporter. He's an economic reporter from AP. So it's not like we're quoting Fox News on this or CNN or any of the major biased ones. AP is the one that all news sites reference, right? Like every news news references an AP you know, posting or whatever, um, or, or um, you know, journalist release, that everybody kind of falls AP. So there's not really anything when anyone can say when this guy's saying exactly what you're, what you're pointing out. They'll tell you, hey, you know, spend money because it helps the economy not inflate. And then, hey, stop spending money because it's making the economy. And what they're doing to make you stop spending money. I know. Basically saying, oh, you, you know, you're not going to be able to get a home. Because it's not going to affect the big, <laughs> the big companies that are getting loans, right? It's not going to affect these banks taking loans from the Federal Reserve. It's only going to affect the people at the bottom of that food chain. Yeah, it is. I remember growing up and the saying um, amongst older people was, <coughs> if you can't afford to buy it with cash, <coughs> don't buy it at all. Yeah. And I remember... Um, it was just an understanding that most people didn't own their own homes until they were success successful in their careers or whatever job that they had and was well into their 30s or 40s. I think, That's when people were able to afford homes back then. I think the form of common every man, like a 
That they, I, I think it's so funny that they've played with people's minds with just the way they call it a credit and a debit card, right? Yeah. right? A credit card means that you're getting credited money, right? But it's not, you're not, you're, you're going in debt money, but they call it your debit card, which is your actual money. Cre- debit, you know, when it's your credits. That yeah. You, it blows. It, they manipulate the language, but it didn't exist until around the 1920s. There was a, a major was yeah i think it was the 1920s there was a major dude that worked at one of the banks he was at a restaurant and he forgot his wallet and he was like you know let me write an iou and then it developed the idea of a personal credit that didn't exist until very modernly they try to do that in the restaurant today and see if you don't get the cops called on you <laughs> yeah yeah definitely but it's kind of interesting to look at how recent an event and an invention you know, personal credit, being able to, um, you know, it's like back in the day going to indentured servitude, right? Like, you know that you're going to go work for this person for so many years, you're going to get your food, your board, and then when you get done, you're going to be given this lump sum of money or your debt, whatever you owe them is paid off. Well, we're all doing that, but we'll never pay that debt off. Yeah, the way the interest rates are, um, you'd be foolish probably to even try to buy a home. Oh yeah. Uh you know, with a, there's such a land grab right now with large companies that it's it's larger it, it seems like there's a, a bigger grab than there ever has been for Ex- land. Especially by large raw, corporations. Yeah, especially raw undeveloped land. Yeah. And so I would suggest to people, you know, rethink how you live. Yeah. Uh don't expect anything to go back to the way it was because we are entering a different era and phase of of history yeah you know i call it history because it's history tomorrow yeah but, i mean we are we I mean this is a crucial point in history there's going to be a lot of things that are talked about how people had to adjust to these things and just, and the blame will be on the common people as it always has been it's always been on the common people. You know, you look at the Great Depression, they blame the farmers, they blame the people making a run on the banks. They don't blame the banks that leaked information out to cause a run on the banks or did any of these things to elicit a response from the masses. It, yeah. We have in Lebanon where people are not allowed to get their money out of the banks in, for three years now. Yeah. Yeah. And you got people robbing their, robbing the banks to get their money out. <coughs> yeah, there was an article... And, you know, these days you don't know how true something is unless you're actually there. But there was uh, an article that showed in a video that showed a woman who uh, robbed the bank to get money out of her own savings account to pay for her sister's cancer treatment. Yeah, that was, that was wild. The way the lady acted in the video, this was my personal take on it was that she was posing for the camera like it was a protest. It's a publicity stunt. Hey, look. You really have letters. to be careful about saying things like that. We do, because that could have, you know, if somebody had died. That's what has got in trouble for. Speaking of which, speaking of which, Jones trial, new Jones trial in a Sandy Hook, another death Sandy Hook defamation case. A father was brought up to the stand to speak, and we're, we're about to listen to it real quick. How many times are they able to sue someone for the same like thing? Is in a different state. It makes you question everything. You know, if a kid who was that big a life force in your house could just be gone like that, what else is possible? It makes you question everything. So you're already completely off balance, right? And then something like this comes along and people start saying stuff like this and it derails you. It completely derails you. And I'll say it again, it's the best way to describe it. It's it's completely disorienting. The whole issue here is that there has been basically a lynch mob to get Alex Jones since Trump got elected. They looked at everything I'd done and decided Sandy Hook was one of the biggest mistakes I made. Nobody's perfect. And they blew up what I said and did, twisted it, took it out of context, and then said that I'm famous and successful because of Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook was 23 minutes, is their evidence in there. 23 minutes of what they think's bad in 10 years. Yeah, there's just some Alex Jones coming coming back around. They're going to be milking him for all that they can, every bit of dollar, dime. You know, that's why we're always so careful about what we say, because we know that come one day they might try to do the same thing to us. Like well, you were just saying. 
You can be considerate and carefully state things, but what is out of our out of our control is how people take you out of context. Yeah. In this day and age, it has been proven to me that anyone can take everything someone says says out of context. And, and, and that, it, that shows like, me there's no justice. No, not in this world, but in the next life. And, right. And so people are going to feel like they can get away with whatever, you know, petty manipulation that they do. But it, it's all going to come to head before the father. But, you know, this the main thing is they're, they're really trying to rake him over the coals in the fire with this one, huh? I mean, they, they, they... Yeah, I think it's ridiculous that someone can be sued so many times just because they have the money. It's almost like it's a weapon used against... Other people who have required wealth in the way that's not accepted by the elitist. That that's a way for them to suck somebody dry and ruin their life. Yeah. And so the American dream, it kind of goes down at the drain. Um, especially if you have a voice that they don't agree with. Oh, definitely. So, definitely. I mean, I hate this happening to him because, you know, out of the entire span of, of years that he's been operating that like he has... He has brought a lot of, he said a lot of things that have actually been true. Yeah, a lot. A lot more than wrong. So, I mean, I don't agree with his emotional state from time to time, but when you see all these things that are true, that did come to fruition, who wouldn't be frustrated that nobody's listening? So I mean, he's a human being. Yeah. So, I mean, who would not be frustrated that everybody's mocking and uh, just basically calling him crazy. I mean, he's fr- he was frustrated. Yeah. I, I I don't think that there was no. I think there was a lot of empathy from him uh, with anyone dying, especially children. Yeah. I don't see Alex Jones as this cruel, mocking person no, he, that they paint him to be because I've never seen any evidence of that. No, I haven't either. And I mean, it's opposite of that. I know, but again, people will contort, manipulate. Take your worst moments to make you guilty. And that's the way the world is. It doesn't matter what the world's doing. You know, that's why the Bible tells us don't get caught up in wicked ways. You know, always be on guard because the enemy is a lion. Seeking whom he may devour those that stand steadfast in the faith. So, like, when we stay upon the path, we stand steadfast. We know these trials are going to come. They're going to be doing all these things. Make us out to be the villain even when they're committing evil. Just don't get caught up in it because it takes one slip. And you're 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 just you're in the same boat, you know. You put yourself in the same boat as them. Yeah, we we live in a world currently where there's no mercy or grace for for people who make mistakes, but yeah. there's a ton of mercy and grace for those who do evil purposely. Seems and like that it. that really bothers me. Yeah, it's like nobody's actually confronted for the true evil that's being done. No, they're Lo- trying to normalize it. Yeah, they're allowed to lie and steal and cheat and. You know, contort the truth, affect generations of children with their food, and like nothing happens. Nobody stands up and says anything. If they do, that they're they're the problem. They're the crazy one. They're you know they're this. They're that. They don't have control of themselves. They should you know any number of slanderous things because when people are in evil and it gets called out, evil does not like to be called out. Yeah, I know. I'm sure if our voice became something that was a problem, we would be experiencing um, similar things. I kind of glad that that's not here you know yeah. i'm not looking forward, forward to anything to that. that he endures no because it's just not worth it and i don't see ourselves doing merch or selling things or then- we just want to be a voice um <coughs> that you know reiterates things that we've heard that are important that that have been censored we want to keep people remembering and being aware and not to forget things that are important yeah yeah, I mean, this is very important. I mean, I again, we're about we're about a business. We do what we want, like we do what we know the Lord has set us to do. We want to show you guys how to live a peaceful life, how to live a good life, how to stay aware of what's going on around you and not get caught up in temptation, right? Know the ways of the enemy and avoid them. Know know the snares and avoid them, right? And you can't you can't defeat evil by using evil either. And so we're trying to show you guys how to live good in a way that people might try to do evil to you, but you just keep on about your work and there's nothing they can really do to you unless you let them. Right? Yeah, it's, it's more difficult to do than than to speak it, but it's definitely true. Yeah, it's very true. 
So, we want to thank you guys for joining us tonight. It's been a real fun time. Uh, hopefully, you keep joining us for more to come. And there I said. That's right. Well, we want to thank you guys and have a blessed evening. See you.